Well, hello and welcome. It's good to be with you. My name is Steve, and today I'd just like to read a few verses in various places. The first is uh, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, which says, And thou shalt call his name Jesus. I just repeat that. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Then in Luke's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, the angel is talking, talking to Mary here, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bear a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Then we go over to John's Gospel and chapter um, where are we now? Chapter 11, where it says, now this is the blind man speaking, and they were asked him, how were thine eyes opened? In that incident, the Lord Jesus had opened this man's eyes, and he came seeing. Verse 11 said, and he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay, anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Shalom and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. <coughs> the emphasis in that verse I want to just highlight is a man that is called Jesus. You know, names have meaning. And in the Old Testament, a Jew would call their son or daughter by a name, and it had a meaning. So, um, name Samuel means lent to the Lord. Uh, further back in Genesis, uh, a name Enos means weak, feeble, mortal men. And so we have the name of Jesus. Unfortunately, a lot of people use that name as a cuss word or a swear word. And it's very offensive and very upsetting. I hate it when they use our precious Saviour's name in vain. I get it at work when they say, oh, such, such, such. And they use that precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But, you know, there is a meaning to the name of Jesus. And if you're not a Christian uh, watching this, the name Jesus, if you use it in vain, God calls that blasphemy. And he warns quite clearly that the Lord will not hold him guiltless that uses his name in vain. And the Lord Jesus quite, quite clearly warns that every idle word that men shall speak thereof should give an account thereof in the day of judgment. So what is the meaning of the name of Jesus? Well, this, well, this evening or this morning, if wherever you are, I'm just going to give his full title. He is called the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. So the name Jesus there means saviour. Let's put that there for a minute. His name is Jesus, which means saviour. But let's break the full title down because he is called the Lord Jesus Christ. So first of all, he is called the Lord. This is a reference to his deity and that he is God. That's why he's called the Lord. This is God manifest in the flesh. This is the one who inhabits eternity. The one who made the heavens. The one who upholds all things by the word of his power. This is the Lord God himself. God Almighty. And Paul says in 1 Timothy 3.16. God was manifest in the flesh. Secondly, um, he is called the Lord. That means he has the right to tell me what to do. He is uh, Lord of all. He is Lord of all the earth. He is far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named. And so he has the right to tell me what to do. Uh, the Lord Jesus said in, in Luke's gospel, he says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? And... Uh, to, to the believers I'm speaking to, is he Lord in all of our lives? You know the expression, if he's not Lord of all, then he's not Lord at all. It is important that we surrender to his Lordship over our lives. 
So he's called the Lord. Now coming back to the name Jesus, remember we're going to give a uh, look at his full title, Lord Jesus Christ. So secondly, his name is Jesus, Jehovah Saviour. And if I just go back, just uh, back into Matthew's Gospel, we'll see the reason why the angel instructed Joseph to call his name Jesus. So the angel instructs Joseph, says, And she, that is Mary, shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For, because, he shall save his people from their sins. The Lord Jesus then came down to be our saviour. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 tells us that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Now how is our Lord going to save his people from their sins? Well, he went to the cross and died for our sins. The Bible tells us also that he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus died for our sins so that we could be forgiven and to be in glory with him. He came to be our saviour. And in Luke's gospel, we quote this verse, I suppose, at Christmas time, but i Quite happy to quote it all year round. And it says uh, in Luke's Gospel, if you just bear with me, in chapter 2. If, you, if you've got a Bible, follow on in chapter 2. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a saviour. That he, what he came to be, our saviour. Which is Christ the Lord. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He came to save you, he came to save me from our sins. The very thing that sends us to hell. So he is called Jesus. And once again, I can't stress enough the fact, I hate the fact when people use his name, Jesus, as a swear word. And yet this name is so precious. And it is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He is called Jesus, the Lord Jesus. Thirdly, the Lord Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, once again, people will use his full name, Jesus Christ, as a swear word. But that name Christ means anointed above all others. He is the anointed one, God's anointed, the one who is exalted above all others. The one who came from heaven to earth to be our saviour is now highly exalted, far above all principality and power and might. He is anointed above his fellows. He is called Christ, God's anointed. So the next time if you're watching this and you're not a Christian, Please be aware of what you're saying, because this Jesus Christ, whom you blaspheme, is the very one who loved you and gave himself for you upon that cross. He died your death. He took your punishment for your sins, the punishment that you should have took. And he died and he took those sins into death where it belongs. And on the third day, he rose from the dead to show that what he did for you on the cross, and for me, of course, was satisfactory to God. God had accepted the payment for our sins that he made on that cross. So just so I can share these thoughts with you and hope that will be a blessing to you. And I pray also that if you're not a Christian, that you'll consider these truths and that you need to be saved. You need to be born again, because without that, if you were to die without the Lord Jesus, you'll go straight to hell in your sins. The Bible says that soul that sinneth, it shall die. That's not a physical death, not just that, but it's eternally separated from God forever in hell. And so you need Jesus to save you from your sins. You need him 
as your Lord and Saviour. And today, I just urge you to think about your soul. Instead of using it as a swear word, Jesus Christ, you must see it as the one who loved you, who came down from heaven to be your saviour, so that you can be where he is in glory and not in hell. And that happens when you come to him in faith, believing on him and receiving him as your saviour. For us believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we love that name. We love that beautiful name, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is precious to us and we love our saviour and we, always, we are forever thankful for what he's done for us. And when we stand before him in heaven, in glory, we shall forever behold those nails, the print of the nails in his hands and his feet. And we will forever be thankful to him. And it could be today that he could come for us to the air and take us to be with himself. So I'll just close now and just uh, trust that these things will be a blessing to you. And uh, if, as, once again, if you're not a Christian now, um, today's the opportunity to get right with God, to be saved. As the Bible says, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Today you can um, begin a new life in the Lord Jesus Christ by, as you receive him as your only saviour. Don't blaspheme his name as, a, as a, to express disgust. Use his name to call, upon, to call upon for salvation. Use his name to praise, to glorify, to adore. Because he alone is worthy. There is a name that I love to hear. I love to uh, sing it so well. I can't remember the rest of the hymn to that. But it's a marvellous, marvellous hymn. Oh, how I love the Saviour's name. The greatest name on earth. It is a name above every name. The name of Jesus. God bless.